Today we're going to be making our own sleeve pieces for patterns that don't have them. The type that have a drop shoulder or a dolman sleeve, it's so easy. And then you can extend these patterns life a bit longer for the whole year. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And we have 100% limitless sewing here today. Now in this channel, I like to present you with opportunities to take the patterns that you have and create pieces make small changes so that you can get many more styles from the patterns that you already have. And what if you have a pattern that you love how it fits, the neckline is amazing, you love the fit of the body, you've already gone through some fitting stages and the style originally just has a short dolman sleeve, nothing else, or a drop shoulder style, which is not a typical sleeveless armhole, which would be a regular armhole. This is just dropped and curved a little lower. In practicality, that type ends up looking like a shorter dolman. You don't have a sleeve to set in as such, but it's not the typical sleeveless armhole. What happens if you want to add yourself a sleeve that will reach up to here or down to the bottom? It's so easy and you can do it from your original pattern pieces. Now, what this is not going to show you, we are not creating a sleeve piece for a traditional sleeveless style that's fitted to the body with a traditional armhole. That's not what we are doing here today. <laughs> we are creating a sleeve piece for an extended shoulder style or a dolman style. That is what we're doing today. And it's very easy to do from the pieces that you have. If you wanted to create a sleeve on a typical sleeveless design, that is a whole different ball game. I am not getting into that today at all. I would not be using the pattern pieces in the same way to create a sleeve on a fitted sleeveless armhole. So just making that clear so no one gets confused here. <laughs> the process you will see me do in both examples I'm going to show you would be exactly the same whether this was a design for knit fabrics or for woven fabrics. The process would be identical. The only thing that is going to vary with your original pattern, of course, is the seam allowance that the designer has added onto the drafting. So that will change. I'll be using the seam allowance that these original patterns have. And don't get hung up on what patterns I'm using. These are general techniques. You can do this with any pattern that you have. So the patterns I'm using are of no importance here. And I will be referring back to this video whenever I do add a sleeve to certain garments you'll see in the future. I'd wanted to make this video for quite a while just to be a standalone reference video for you. The easiest way to go about this is to make the original pattern. Make it with the original short sleeve style dolman or drop shoulder style. Have it, put it on, and this is the easiest way that you can measure from there the total length extra that you want to add for your new sleeve piece. When you have a regular armhole that reaches the shoulder joint, it's easy to measure that as a reference point. When you measure your arm, same, you measure from the joint right here. You see, you want it long, you would fold your elbow and go down up to the length you want. But in these styles, because they're dropped or dolmen, you don't really know where the shoulder is on the pattern. So it's not like you can just take this pattern from scratch and start from there. That would be just guessing and it wouldn't give you a really accurate result in the length that you want. You might end up with a shorter or a longer length. So it's better to just make the original garment, wear it in the summer, whatnot, and then think about it and then measure from there to see what length extra that you want. So let's see two examples here. One is a knit, one is a woven. You'll see the process is very similar. I'm gonna get two measurements here. I just wanna know how much to extend for a short sleeve and for a long one. So from right here, I'm gonna measure how much I want if I just need a sleeve above the elbow, approximately nine inches from here down. If I want it full length, I'm just gonna fold my elbow and go down to the wrist, 22, 23 inches. I'll measure from the seam line right there. That's what I'm gonna measure on the sleeve piece that I'm going to make. And just measure down. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but I'd like my sleeve to be 17 and a half inches finished, plus one inch of hem allowance. So my sleeve piece that I'll draw will be 18 and a half inches long, measured from there, from the seam line, not from the edge. I know the length that my sleeve piece needs to be, but I also need to know how wide to make it at the wrist. Let's start with 10, is what I use with woven things. It could be smaller. So considering that the seam allowance will take away three quarters of an inch, there's three eighths and three eighths on the other, let's take away that. Nine and a quarter inches is good. I never want a neat sleeve to finish like this. 
So nine and a quarter plus the three eighths on both sides of the sleeve is 10 inches. So the bottom of my pattern piece will measure 10 inches. That's what I like. On both my examples, you will see I throw some numbers around, some lengths and such. That is just in reference to my arms, my measurements. Of course, they will not be your measurements. We all have different length arms. We all have different patterns that we're working from originally. So the length that you're gonna add is always gonna be different and this is customized to you. Whether you want it here at the elbow, three quarters long, whatever you want, you can create. There will be similar concepts that you'll see in both my examples. And first I'm going to show you the example of a pattern that you haven't seen on the channel soon, but you will very soon next week because I'm working on a few of these. And it's a free pattern, so make sure you're subscribed, turn on your notifications because there's always really helpful content here on this channel. And I'm excited to share that free pattern. It's a really, really nice one. And I make my content all linked to each other, you know, so there's a bit of relation from one video to the next. So let's just see this process where we have a drop shoulder style. I'm very happy with the original design for summer, but I know a lot of you would want a longer sleeve, either to here, either to there. We are going to create both sleeve pieces on the same paper and then separate them. So let's see. Here I have the back, here I have the front. I have pinned at the shoulder seams. There is a little mark on the pattern, so it's easy to overlap the seam allowances right there. And so this is our armhole right here on that curve. From the edge of the paper, I have drawn in the seam line that I'm gonna use 3 eighths, making that easy to see. I'm just gonna slide a big piece of paper underneath. Because this is a drop shoulder style, we're gonna end up with a sleeve that has a pretty flat sleeve cap, which matches the shape of the armhole. If this was a regular armhole, I would not be creating a sleeve like this. But with this you can, and you can see that it does need to have a shape. You can't just add on a rectangle here because you do have a slight curve in the armholes. I'm going to take a wheel and leave some marks and I'm going to trace right on top of that seam line so that I can see it on the other side of the paper because that's what I want to match. These types of sleeves that are flatter you don't ease anything, you don't need to gather anything like a typical setting sleeve. So this can measure one to one right here. I'm going to make a mark here where the shoulder seam meets so that I know to match the sleeve there later. And now I'm going to remove my pattern piece. Now on my paper, I can see the marks from my tracing wheel. So I'm just going to quickly draw that right here. It's following along the shape. This is the front. This is the back. There you can see my shape. Above this line that I drew, which is the seam line, I'm going to add my seam allowance, which is going to be 3 eighths all around this curve right there. Now that I've drawn that, remember I marked a little line where my shoulder seam is going to be. I'm going to draw a line all the way down and it's going to be my grain line mark right here and also help me measure the sleeve. I am going to bring my original armhole back. I'm going to put this on top of where the seam line is marked under there and I'm going to choose a random spot at the back to put double notches and make sure the mark is nice and firm so it marks on the other side. And over here, I'm going to draw a single notch. And now I can transfer these over here. For a short sleeve, I needed nine inches from the top of the sleeve. I'm going to measure that here. I think a cutting mat comes really handy for these types of things because it just helps you draw straight lines. I've aligned the top of my paper along one of the lines and I'm going to find the line that matches my mark here and just draw a line straight across. That is the length I need for a short sleeve. And for a longer sleeve, I needed 23 extra inches. At the line of my short sleeve, I have an idea of the circumference I want. It's going to be nice and wide, about 16 inches. And if I measure the width up here, we have 20. So I know that if I draw a straight line here, I need to come in two inches on this side and on that side. So that's how I'm going to do it. Easy peasy, just to make it all neat. So from the edge here of my sleeve, I'm going to just draw a straight line coming down here. Measure two inches in right there the same over here so after marking that i'm just going to draw this in like this then i'm going to draw my hem allowance i think five eighths of an inch is okay and i'll just draw my hem allowance here below that line and then over here i want to create this little peak situation out just to draw this to the same angle i have over here and over here it's the same so that would be my short sleeve it's going to fit the armhole 
It's gonna have the length that I want. Now I have continued lengthening this for my full length. Here is my full length sleeve right here. I'm gonna continue that rectangle I had drawn before from the top of the sleeve just to help me bring it in evenly on either side. I'm also gonna draw my hem allowance. At the bottom, I'm also gonna take in two inches from each side. I'm gonna have a wider area at the bottom. And I'm probably gonna put a little casing with a little elastic just to bring it in at the wrist. So I'm gonna draw this on the same pattern piece from the point of the sleeve over here down to this area. And I'm basically gonna have two sleeve pieces in one. Now you can see all the lines nicely done. <laughs> there is my short sleeve on the top. You can see from that point, I drew in the angle to bring it in for my short sleeve. And from that same point, I did it for the bottom, for the long sleeve. Now this one's gonna have a casing. I left a one inch hem allowance. I've trued that on the side, bringing that angle out a little to match that angle. And I'm gonna have a casing with an elastic inside. That's gonna be super easy. Other options I could do at the bottom to get rid of some ease is to do some pleats and add a cuff. If I was gonna add a cuff, then I would probably make the sleeve a little shorter because I measured this down to here. So those are options that you can go further. I'm going to be cutting around that outline with a red line and this is going to be my long sleeve piece. And on another piece of paper, I've just traced out my short sleeve right here, making sure to transfer the grain line mark, the single notch for the front, the one that will match the shoulder and the double notch for the back. This is a type of sleeve you would sew in on the flat. Easy peasy, the easiest sleeve. You don't need to do any gathering stitches on the top like you do for the ones that have a taller sleeve cap and a regular armhole. This is just so much easier. And I would do the exact same process for another pattern. What will vary a little is the shape and the width, you know, according to your pattern, but the process would be exactly the same. As you saw, I overlap the shoulder seams, just put it on top, drew my seam line, and that's how I got that shape right there and this is gonna match perfect. One thing you need to take into account when you are going to create a long sleeve is the original design and style of the garment. Now this original style is a loose fitting. You just pull it over your head. It's not fitted. There's no dots, no zipper. The opening right here is quite large, quite relaxed. So I don't expect to have a really fitted sleeve here at the bottom. That would make no sense. You know, starting from the top and then measuring like this, it would create a really sharp angle and it would just not hang right. So because I know the style is like that, I just left it wide here at the bottom so that I can gather in these with either a casing and an elastic or gathers and a tiny cuff, something of the sorts, because I think that style of sleeve would match the style of the original garment. So just think about that. Before I show you the second example, I want to share with you the Feature Friday pattern at Love Notions today and it's a salt whistle peplum and dress this is my navy top one of my versions i've made too this pattern was released around this time last year it's gorgeous it's got a beautiful beautiful square neckline finished with a facing i do have a tutorial about how to sew it lots of sleeve options this is a short puff with a casing right here super cute you have a separate bodice a bust up for the full bust option and then from the bodice seam, you'll either attach a shorter length or a long length. Nice elasticated waist. Who doesn't want that? It's so comfortable, so beautiful. All of the content I have already created on the channel and it's there for you to see if you want more information. This is my salt whistle peplum top. This is one of the options. It's just got a shorter length skirt underneath the bodice seam. Beautiful scallops, I love them. This is a blue rayon with a Swiss dot detail and a tiny bit of linen in the blend. I've got it paired over my white glissando skirt. White shoes and a really fun handbag that has a few colors including blue. I love these fun handbags when I'm wearing just solids like this. It makes the outfit a little more lively, a little more me. Against the white, you can really see the scallops which I had failed to do in other styling options so you can really see that there. Finish neatly with a facing that has the same shape. It does take a little while to get them to look really neat but I think it's totally worth it and there is a separate bodice seam casing of elastic inside super super comfortable. I love it over this skirt that's a more slim style. Gorgeous square neckline finished with a facing. I have the short puff sleeve option there's also long sleeve options and a sleeveless one. Lots of things for you to mix and match and it's just so lovely. I love it in a solid because you can really see the details here.
This is my salt whistle dress above the knee length with the lovely scalloped hem. Just so, so lovely. This is one of my favorite prints ever. Simple styling, just some gorgeous, gorgeous heels, nothing else. Elasticated inside, very comfortable. I love this dress. Nice neat facing, sleeveless armholes with great coverage, binding inside, so lovely. There's a bust out there for great shaping, the full bust option. Such a gorgeous dress that I know I can dress up and down. I love that the waist goes in, but it's not tight, it's not fitted. You don't need any closure methods to get in like zippers. It's so, so easy to just pull on over your head and look really nicely put together. I'll never apologize for bringing out my sleeveless Metra Blazer hack because I wear it so much. It's just the perfect layering piece over anything and over this dress as well. I have actually worn this exact same outfit out in my real life. <laughs> As always, the Metra is a staple for me because the neckline of the blazer is so unfast. I can wear a really simple neck. I love this, I think the wide lapel and this type of neckline is really pretty and you can put a really simple neckline underneath, like this square neckline. I really want to make a dress that I can only dress up. I usually want to dress them up and down. And why not? White sneakers and a crossbody bag. Love it because it just makes the outfit look more casual and I can just wear this every day and feel like I'm not that dressed up. The only difference really are the shoes. I hope you enjoyed seeing them today. Different styling, different to what I showed last year when the pattern was released. Don't forget to grab it for only $5 today. It's an amazing price, great value. My affiliate link and my active coupon code, Needles10, is in the description box and in the pinned comments so you can find them easily. It's lovely, I really love mine. And this is a pattern actually I've included in a capsule collection that I'm planning for the month of October. So as I said before, make sure you subscribe because there's always fun content here. For the second example, the process is very, very similar. There's very similar concepts here. And in this case, we have a short dolman sleeve. I would follow the exact same process if this was a knit or a woven. With this one, it's just a little lower than the first one that we saw. So the shape here is a little more straight. I still can't just whack on a rectangle on here. I still need to create that shape and you can do it very easily, so let's see. To make a really easy extension to this dolman sleeve that is not extending the dolman sleeve but having a separate piece, first you need to pin the paper pieces at the shoulder seams. I've pinned the front and the back together here, 3 8 seam allowance and I've drawn a green line across there so you can see what that is. So the total armhole now will form a little bit of a curve and that's why you need to do this to be able to draw the sleeve piece with the same curve. You can't just draw a rectangle. This is not a rectangle and it's not the way the dolman sleeve hangs on the body. Up closer you can see where I've pinned it together there and I have drawn the seam allowance that the pattern uses here. That's 3 eighths of an inch, so I've drawn that with a blue line. What I have here is just a piece of paper. I have drawn a green line across the center. That will be the grain line of the sleeve and the section that will match the shoulder seam right here of this piece. So I'll slide this under, make sure the green line I marked right there matches the shoulder seam. So you can see my blue line that I had marked there, the seam allowance, 3 eighths. So with the tracing wheel, I'm just gonna mark right through so I can see the mark on the other side. Now we just need to draw how long the sleeve is going to be. You saw that I wanted my extension to be 18 and a half inches, including one inch of hem allowance. So from the seam line there, from that blue line down, I'm going to measure those 18 and a half. I want the bottom of my wrist to measure 10 inches, including the 3 8 seam allowance you're gonna use on the sides. So from that middle section right there, I'm going to measure five inches out there, five inches out there. Here you can see the bottom of the sleeve. Now you can see the whole thing again. Now it's just about uniting this section here to there. Draw the line there and on the other side up to where the hem will be. We have drawn the sleeve. I'm going to mark on the sleeve here that this is the front and that this is the back just as reference. Now we can remove this. On this section is where we are going to see the mark that our tracing wheel made. So I'm just gonna draw that on. I can see the little holes punched through the paper and you 
can see the curve starting to form there. Now to this I need to add a 3 8 seam allowance. This line is matching the seam line that the dolmen armhole had. So now we need to add 3 8 to this. Now on these extremes you can see that this comes out like that. It's a shape that the sleeve has. And so to truly this out just manually, just bring this in like that. You have a weird little thing right there. That's how this area will be trued to that sleeve opening that has a curve on the dolmen. So just cut it out like that. <laughs> so I've cut up to there. You've seen me do this before multiple times and I always do it. So I keep showing you. Fold this as you would when you do your hem. Fold away your hem allowance and then just cut on the sides. And now you can cut the bottom. Voila, you will have your sleeve piece. Remember the green line is the grain line right there. And you'll cut two of them and just put them on your dolmen armhole extended on the flat. For both of these, once I have my sleeve pieces, I will just sew them in on the flat. I'm very happy to do that. There's no easing in to do. The length of the top of the sleeve is going to match your armhole one to one. It's just very easy to set it in there on the flat. At this stage, the shoulder seams have been sewn and so has the neckline. And so I've pinned my sleeve piece to this dolmen type armhole, right sides together. So this was sewn in on the flat, so you'll sew the side seam and then go off and sew the sleeve at the same time. Seam allowances towards the sleeve. The sleeves fit beautifully. They fit really well in the dolmen armhole that we created instead of hemming it or putting the little band just extends the use of this pattern to the whole year. As you see with this second example, the original design is a more fitted design, is more closer to the body, and that's why my sleeve piece is also more fitted here at the bottom. It matches the style. So as I mentioned before, check what original style you're doing to sort of match the style of the sleeve, whether it's going to be a fitted sleeve or a looser sleeve. Try to match those up when you think about this and you decide at the end what circumference you want to leave yourself. Always want extra space here. Don't make it skin tight that is so uncomfortable, even with a knit. Now, if you watched carefully and you compared both examples, you see that I ended up with very similar results. All of my sleeve pieces have the seam allowances, the shoulder seams marked, I've trued the hems, all of that, drawn in the seam allowance at the top but I didn't do them in the exact same order. And that's just me and my brain and how it was working on the day. You know, you can choose your own order of events as long as you end up with all the reference points that you saw there, that you have your grain line, your shoulder notch at least, you can add the ones so you can match it over here if you want to, through the hem, and you can easily create your own pieces from your original pattern. It's so, so, so easy. And then you can enjoy these patterns for the whole year, make them in flannel, make, make them in your yummy knits and you can have tops for autumn and winter as well using the same patterns that were originally designed for summer. But we don't have limits here in this channel, that's why I always say it's limitless because we can do so much with sewing and creating these new pieces and adding on these extra options is one of my most favourite things to do in sewing. And I love, 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 love sharing all of this with you because I know it can just help you go further with all your sewing and your patterns. Remember to check out the Salt Whistle Peplum and Dress today, only $5. All the links are below. That is all from me. I'm going to go and finish my long sleeve tops that I'm making using this sleeve piece. Make sure you subscribe because you'll see them in a couple of days. So excited to share. And that is all from me. Have an amazing weekend. If you rest or sew, whatever you do, I'll be sewing. <laughs> and I'll see you very soon. Bye.